Hello and welcome to all the ghouls and vampires out there. I'm Joe here from East Makoistan. Hello and greetings. And welcome to our Scream for Scream podcast where we're examining Halloween 4 shot by shot. The first view of something other than the opening credits in the great fields for this film is the sanitarium. And... The shot is outside, but before that we've got the car, of course, or the ambulance, I mean, arriving before it, and it's, of course, raining, because it's an 80s movie. Jeez, a lot of 80s movies start in the rain. Do you think maybe it was raining continuously everywhere in the 80s, and there was never any sunlight? Very likely. <laughs> well, tell me, Dan, you were, you were born in the 80s. Was it really like that? I wouldn't know. Oh, well, in the 90s, all we had was misty, foggy, smoke-filled, dark nights. And bright, dazzling colors. Really? Where were the great, dazzling colors? <laughs> Anyways, the movie's introduction of the sanitarium is reminiscent of the old haunted houses in old movies or of the houses before the slaughter begins for Hitchcock I believe it was and it reminds me of some of the Hammer movies and so, that was probably intentional yeah slowly introducing us to Dracula's castle or to Frankenstein's you know place of work it was probably something that dad the creator and the director wanted to shift from just slasher to add a bit more horror into uh yeah a bit of a uh, a certain horror feel there and growing ominousness to the film. And the two characters rush inside with, of course, their uh, documents and whatnot over their heads or their bags or whatever. And they're asked, you know, what's your business here? And after they're told all metal possessions into the tray because they're not letting anyone wander into the madhouse section of the sanitarium with metal of course given how stupid these two ambulance workers are one might expect them to keep a metal object probably a knife or a gun on their person i'm just saying they're dumb enough to because these two I have no respect for. They are well aware that Michael Myers is a very dangerous man. And you can't just uh, deal with him unarmed. But they blab about his niece and his presence later. Yeah. We'll get to that when that time comes. So, you've got the security guard, though, who's far more cautious. And he's the one who presses the button to let them in. So they're in there only at his pleasure. And he is... I don't get the sense that he takes much of a liking to them. I think he reads that into their person that they're not terribly bright. And he scolds them for being light. And tells them, heck of a night, huh? Which he says a bit more cheerfully. And then briskly informs them that he will escort them down. And, of course, this is their first time down in the barrels, in the depths, I, I guess you could say, of this asylum. And the lady says, I hope it's the last time, which is kind of humorous because it is the last time for her that she's going down there. Which is a bit of the movie having a sly wink and nod to what's going to happen to her, what's to come. But on the other hand, he tells them that you never get used to it and i can imagine you know no one ever really does one of them praises the lord i'm kidding actually he says jesus and surprised at the noise one of the inmates or patients makes at which point he's scolded by the security guard jesus ain't got nothing to do with it which the thing about their descent further into the depths of the sanitarium is that on a symbolic level, 
they're descending into the depths of a certain realm I can't actually say the name of here on YouTube, en fal. I think I could use the, the French term, the underworld in Christian mythology of sorts. The idea is that they are descending down where evildoers all reside and are punished. And this is a bit of Dante's journey down there. where Except they're not going there for discovery. They're going there to remove a wicked soul from where he is meant to be so that he may continue to do his demonic work. At least that's symbolically what I think of with this scene in that they are unleashing a demon onto the world in a way. And symbolically one can kind of compare their actions to the one family that went to praise Dracula in I think the third Dracula movie of Hammer or it's like the group of people who revive Dracula or whatever simply for fun or something which is a common motif in a lot of horror films and books where someone revives a demon thinking well what's the worst that can happen to me and they unleash something they could not control and this is very um, relevant. When you see them land with, in the elevator, it's blacks and reds that you see. Yeah. And I also think that the thing about the shape shifting from the body of Michael Myers to the body of Jamie Lloyd is that, in a way, with the Unleash cannot really be contained to an extent by them like by mortal means as these doctors might understand it and at least in the short term afterwards we get in the elevator the story of michael myers how 10 years ago he went around slaughtering people and went after his sister but his doctor stopped him now, the thing is, at this point, Michael's actions have become more history than anything else. And I know Cinema Snob said something about how, yeah, this is for the one guy in the audience who has not seen the original movie, which, while a funny comment, this also fulfills the storyline job of kind of it. It puts us into the mindset of the characters. What did they think of that night? What did they know of it? The guard says, this guy gives me the willies. Which, given that he's the doorman to the underworld in a way, he's taking on the role of Sharon, of Sharon the pilot of the river Styx, and guide into the underworld. The fact that he is saying, this guy scares me. Tread lightly as you withdraw this person from this place. On the other hand, when they run into the one doctor later, he has no care and describes Loomis's position as just ceremonial. And most of that discussion is going to be for the next video. But the very fact that they're releasing Myers would anger Loomis because he would never allow it. And the fact that he's basically been demoted after, you know, saving lives and stopping Michael Myers is fairly horrifying. And I'm, if I sound cynical, only in modern society could this happen. And I don't say that to hate on modern society too much because it has given us a lot of good things. But someone like Michael Myers should not be released. It's akin to releasing, like I said, a demon. But that's, I think, symbolically what this movie is showing. Michael has fall, has passed on, but he's revived when from beyond the ken to torment the living again. That's kind of the symbolic message. I know that the movie has its explanation for how Loomis survived the fire and how Michael might have survived it. But 
as a horror film with Loomis, one could say his work is not yet done. He has to pass down as a, the mentor, as the magician archetype. He must pass on the means by which to exercise the shape and destroy the shape to the next generation. His work is not yet finished. On the other hand, Michael cannot be laid to rest because the the darkest side of humanity which is to draw him forth and to unleash him once more and not just to unleash him on just anyone but on a young little girl the symbol of innocence itself so anything you want to add i'm i'm just saying that uh take i'm just going to add that taking such a demon from uh the underworld to the wor world of the living is a horrid idea. I agree. I agree. They should have just finished a job. And left him there. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree. Anyways, tell us what you think. And don't forget to haunt that like and subscribe button until it runs away screaming.